Hi, so we will now going to be learning about how you can build the interface in Unity. So last time I was here, we talked about how you can put a text element on the panel. And we looked at the button as to how you can click on the button and change the text on the button and also be able to display an output in the console environment and also enable or disable the button. So today we're going to continue and add some more components. So the idea is to be able to add text boxes and so that the button can read from the text boxes into the environment, into the um, click event. So we're now going to go back to the game object and under UI I have a text element. So I can click on the text and that places a text element right on the canvas. I can move it and place it wherever I wish. Similarly I can go to inspector and change the text that displays in the text. So I can call this one username and then I can change the color if I wish. I can change the font size and some of the other basic properties that I already talked about. And I can make it appear a bit larger than what it is right now. And then if I want to get another text, I do not have to go all the way through. Let me make it not that bright color. Okay, so I don't have to go back again over and over. I can simply click on the text right from my hierarchy. This will going to select my text item, whichever text I want item I want. I can change the names of the text items right from here. So if I click on it, since I already have something called game login, which is called text, my second one, which is username, I can give it more of a uh, user-friendly name like username. I can call it that way. I can prefix it with txt username. So all these different ways of putting your object names are possible. So you're going to click on this and you will going to control C, control V and that will going to create a duplicate object. And you can see right in the hierarchy it does that. Okay. So again, going back here, I'll, I can call it txt username is the first one I'm calling. Okay, I got to press enter to finalize the change and you can see right in the hierarchy that the name has been changed. The second text box, which is a duplicate copy of the first one, let me first move it away so I can click on it and I can push it away and you can see there are two of them. And I'm going to call my second one txt password. and I can press enter to finalize the name and I can change the value right from the text property make it password now let me bring in a text box so in order for me to bring in a text box in this environment it's called if I go to game object UI it's called an input field so for those of you who are coming from VB.net like Visual Studio you probably are familiar with the text box here we call it an input field so you click on it and it it uh, brings one you can drag it and place it wherever you like so now let me rename those text um, uh, items that I have so I can rename it anytime I like so I can click on txt username and let me actually call it LBL username because these are actually used for labels so I'm gonna call them LBL username and you will notice as soon as I rename them they will gonna be renamed inside my hierarchy similarly I'll gonna click the second one I'm going to call this one txt password uh, sorry lbl password and it's going to be updated right here so this is my text box which is uh, actually called input field here so I click on it same deal it also has a name called input field I can click on it in the inspector and let me call it txt username so that's my txt username now let me make a duplicate copy of this so I can just do control C control V and you can see right here that there, there are two txt usernames I can drag the second one because it's placed right on top and then I can go back and rename it to txt password so as you can see I'm building my user interface over here very nicely and here is my login button I can go back and click on my button and either I click on the script that is associated with it or I can certainly go into my project and assets and double click on it either way I will be able to get to my script now 
If I am back in my script, you will notice that in my script from the previous example that I did, I created two objects called my button of type button and button text of type text. Now check out in the Unity environment, if you click on the button inside the process button script, which is a script that I wrote, those objects are also available right over here. They're currently not tied to any objects. For that reason, I had to type them internally to objects. So what I'm going to teach you next is how you can declare empty objects, null pointer objects in the code, and you can come to the Unity interface and actually link them to actual objects on the screen. So we're now going to switch back over here and let me declare some more objects right here. So now I want to be able to declare a public input field. I'm going to declare one input field called UN and the other one I want to declare as pass to show you that the names don't have to match and also you can declare multiple objects on the same line. Once we are done with this, let's save the changes. Let's switch over to the Unity and notice right here in the inspector when I'm on the button, notice that the UN and pass, there are two extra objects that now appear in the script list. So if I click on this object, which currently says none, there's a little gear-like symbol in front. So if I click on it, it loads this select input field. Now if I want to associate this with TXT username, I can click on TXT username, so it's going to be tied to TXT username. Similarly, I can click on the second one, again click on the same symbol, and I can make it associated with TXT password. So now both of these objects are actually tied to these two objects. Let me now switch back to my console from console in my code environment. This is where I then will be able to use this information in the change text event. So what I want to do in instead of a change text event, I want to change the name of my method to process text. Okay. So the moment I wrote process text, it gives me an error. And it says that the process text actually doesn't exist. There are some potential fixes available to me. If I click on it, it says either you can change the name of change text to process text, and these are some of the other options I can give you. So let me say rename my change text to process text. So that makes my life easier. I don't have to go and find the method and rename it. It will going to do it for me. So that's one of the great features. Now right here, what I'm going to now try to do is I'll try to read the values of the username and password and then display them. Now, there are multiple ways of doing it. Either I can display them directly inside uh, a debug.log, or actually I can read it from the input fields into local variables of type string, and then I can display those. So I'll try to do both. So in this tutorial, I will going to teach you how you can directly display a username that the user has entered upon click of a button in the console. And then in the next one, I will going to teach you in the next part of this tutorial as to how you can read the value from a text box into a local variable and then display it. So here, for now, what we're going to do is we will going to come down here and we'll say debug.log, debug.log, user name is, and then let me display the username which is un dot text. Now you may be wondering how can the un dot text be able to get the information from txt username because we actually tied them together in the unity. That's how it can talk to it. Similarly I can just copy and paste this line and I can they say password is and then instead of un.txt, I can say pass.txt. So locally inside the code environment, you will be using the names of the objects that you have declared 
In the Unity environment, you are going to tie these objects to the actual objects on the scene, and that's how they can talk to each other. So let me save the changes, and let me switch over to the Unity, and let's run this in the game engine. So it says enter text. Let me click here and enter a username. And let me enter a password. And let me click login. And let me open the console so that you can see the output. So as soon as I click on the login, notice it says the button was clicked. The text on the button changes to login in and the button is currently disabled. And it says username is professor and the password is Saad. So it is able to read the text from the text boxes or the input fields and is able to display it in the console. Let me turn it off. So in the next tutorial, I will going to teach you how you can store these values in the local variables or local objects and then display from there. Hope you would have enjoyed this tutorial. Catch you in the next one. Thank you. For